this is the former Calverton Colliery site. Once again, it's an oasis of beautiful yellow flowers. Now, it's the beautiful yellow flowers of bird's foot trefoil, whereas a month or so ago, it was the beautiful golden yellow flowers of gorse which clothed this site. This really is a spectacular floral display. Bird's foot trefoil holds the key to the species that I'm after today. Beautiful flowers of birdswood trefoil behind me and all around me here. I've never seen birdswood trefoil like it on a site. We really do underappreciate the value and potential to invertebrates and other wildlife of our former colliery sites here in Nottinghamshire. This one is just a, an absolute stunner, and that's largely because it's untouched. But this birdswood trefoil holds the species that I'm after. It's in the larval stage, so I'm once again looking for a very small, about a centimetre long caterpillar at maximum, I would have thought by now. And it's the caterpillar of the green hair street butterfly. Now, I did come here a few weeks ago and managed to film one individual. Hopefully, there's some eggs from that one individual knocking around here when those eggs have hatched into today's quarry the green hair street larva. It feeds on bird's foot trefoil, it also feeds on gorse as well and various other plants but I'm going to be looking on bird's foot trefoil today. The only way I can have any chance of finding it is by the use of one of these. This is just a normal butterfly net because I was totally unprepared and having set off from the house this morning with no idea where to go, suddenly found myself 15 miles south and just outside Nottingham here at Calverton Colliery. But for birds with trefoil flowers, this should be fine for sweeping through as long as I don't snag it on these dog roses behind me or the bramble that's developing underfoot. I should be okay. We shall see. It's still a rather daunting task and probably going to be a fruitless task. So it's time to get sweeping. So now we've swept, we have the contents of the net here. Now there's several of these. These are small green larvae. They're not the green larvae that I'm looking for. I believe that these aren't Lepidopterus. And there's a lot of these. They have a single white stripe down the length dorsally. And they're all the same sort of size of about four to five millimetres. There's a couple there, look. I'm not sure what they are but they're not the quarry that I'm after. That's the one thing with invertebrates and the difficulties of our identification in invertebrates, whether in the larval stage or whatever. 
Ah, now then. Here we are. That is my quarry. And this is green hair streak. I'll get you in a little bit closer, but it has two almost like tram lines running dorsally down the back. This is smaller. If I show you the lava that I'm getting a lot of, which is there, which is probably dipterous in all probability, this could well be a lava of one of the hoverflies, but that's not what I'm after. That is. Well, that was surprisingly easy, wasn't it? So, we'll get this one potted up, so it can't go anywhere. We'll put in some food plant. Put it in the shade out of the way and I'll just carefully go through this lot. Of course, you always get lots of invertebrates. So you never know what's going to turn up. There has been a Cryptocephalus knocking around in here, and it's Cryptocephalus fulvus, which is a, a small, pale brown Cryptocephalus. I never dreamt that it would be that lucky. I'll spread that around. Sometimes it pays just to watch for a bit of movement, but plenty of those other green lava. But at least we've been successful. Well, I found two. There was a second one tucked in there, just I was just having another final sift, and it's a large one. So there you can see the two. The one on the left, the larger one, has that double tram line as well, look. Quite similar to the larva of common blue, which is another species that I'll be sweeping for in a couple of weeks. They're only very young larva or eggs at the moment. But here we have two green hair streak lava. So, time to take these home, get some photographs, and I'll insert the photographs here. Well, I'm quite pleased how that turned out. Sometimes it does on these spontaneous visits. I never know, first thing in the morning, or indeed when I get in the car, exactly where I'm going to go on any particular morning. Sometimes I just end up in the strangest of places. But I wouldn't call this strange. I've never seen such a display of birds with trefoil. It's just a carpet over so much of this site, especially where the ground is bare. And if you want to go and find common blue lava or green hair street lava like I have today, and you're going to use a sweep net, don't sweep the whole site. You can choose the sort of most likely areas to find these lava. You don't need really bushy sort of healthy strong tall plants quite often the plants that common blues and green hair streets will lay on are the most weediest little things growing in bare ground almost so somewhere like this probably
probably be quite ideal where the birch foot trefoil is quite short. But over time and with a bit of experience, you'll eventually find out and determine the best places to sweep. The best places to sweep with success in the end. And that's the name of the game. If you're not successful first time in finding a species, don't give up. Think, oh, it's too much work. You don't find out and you don't learn that way. Of course, you can Google all this. But where's the fun in that? But Google and the internet is very useful in helping you to narrow down your search by doing a bit of online research before you go out into the field armed with your net and your pots. Spend a bit of time and do your research.